Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.6 and DECA Ironworks Simulations JF-17 Thunder Module. Welcome to Tutorial 8, Laser Guided Bombs. Today we're going to go over the procedures for working with laser guided bombs in the JF-17. It's capable of carrying three different types, uh, all the American uh, GBU series of weapons, Paveway series weapons. Uh, it's capable of carrying the GBU-10, which is a one, sorry, a 2,000 pound laser guided bomb. It's a guidance kit that can be fitted to the Mark 84 bomb. Uh, those can only be carried singly on the inner pylons. We can also carry the GBU-16, which is a 1,000 pound class bomb. It's a, a kit that's mounted to the Mark 83. Again, those can only be carried singly on the inner pylons. And then there's the GBU-12, which is based on the Mark 82. It's a 500 pound class bomb. They can be carried singly on the inner pylons or doubly on the outer wing pylons. Today we're going to carry uh, double racks of the GBU-12 on the outer pylons. So, let's get started. Let's take a little look in the cockpit. And if I go ahead and bring up the SMS page, we're going to see there's a bit of a problem here. It says we have nothing on the aircraft whatsoever. Now, why is that? Well, that's because uh, DECA have decided to simulate the DTC to a degree, which is in my opinion, a really, really cool and realistic thing to do. Uh, so the, the aircraft doesn't know what weapons are on board. It only knows when you actually tell it via the data cartridge. So whenever you make a change to your loadout, which I've actually done before starting this video, um, it basically blanks out and has no idea what you have. So let me take you through the procedure for doing this correctly. If I jump back to the outside view, let's go ahead and get the aircraft armed up. So we can do this by opening the communications menu. Now the communications menu is going to be uh, different depending on your keyboard layout. It's listed as communications menu here in the control options. For me it's a backslash. So just uh, take note of whatever yours is. So if I bring up the communications menu and choose ground crew and then choose rearm and refuel, we're going to go ahead and choose pylon 2 and we're going to put the double rack mark 12 on there. It's sorry GBU 12. And in pylon 6 and again, double rack the GBU-12 for a total of four. We could also carry singles on pylons three and five as well. That would give us a total of six laser-guided bombs. Quite a nice loadout. But today I'm carrying fuel because that would be more normal in the JF-17. It does not have very long legs. So let's go ahead and get the ground crew to pop those weapons on the aircraft. Uh, that will take just a few moments. And then we will still have, in fact no information on the SMS page, but we're going to resolve that in just a moment. So, shouldn't take too much longer. We should have these GBUs on the wings in short order. Oh, that's one side going on. You can see the aircraft jiggle on its undercarriage, and that's the other side on. So, let's jump back into the cockpit. We can see that the SMS page still shows absolutely nothing. That's okay. We're now going to have to communicate with the ground crew and get them to update our data cartridge. So once again, let's bring up the communications menu, bring up ground crew, and we're going to say update DTC data, and then update data. Copy. Updating the DTC now. And I've made an intentional mistake you're going to see in a sec. <laughs> so obviously they they can't hand us the DTC cartridge while the canopy's closed. So we open our canopy fully. I'm going to cancel the master warning there. And now that we have the cartridge, let's have a little look down here at the DTC cartridge slot. If there was already a cartridge in, we would eject it, but there isn't one in right now. One click on the slot will place our cartridge in the slot. Another click will fully insert it. Once the cartridge is fully inserted, the left multifunction display will automatically display the load page. Now, normally at mission start, you would do a complete load of the DTC. I've actually already done that previously. So you, you would normally press all, and that would allow you to load all data. We only want to load SMS data because that's the only thing that's changed. So I select SMS and I press enter. It says DTC transfer. 
and it now says DTC locked, and we have a master warning. Now, the reason for the master warning is that our configuration is now changed. We'll resolve that in just a moment. So now if I go main menu, and SMS, ta-da! Now all of the weapons are present. We can see that we have PL5s on the wingtips, two times GBU-12 on pylons two and six, fuel tanks on three and five, and the WMD targeting pod in the center line. We also have 180 rounds of cannon. Excellent. And if I take a little look at my um, kind of warning display here, I can see config is red and canopy is red. Let's fix canopy. That one's easy enough. We will simply close the canopy. And pressurize. And that goes away. And then on config, we have to go down here to the flight control system panel. We need to switch it to air to ground mode and air to ground profile number two, because we're at maximum takeoff weight. And that light no now goes out. Everything is now correctly configured. Okay, so with that done, let's now at last take a little look at the weapon and what we need to do to pre-configure it. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is pop the aircraft into air to ground master mode, because that makes this all a little bit easier. And with the aircraft in air to ground master mode, it's automatically selected the GBU-12s, because that's the only air to ground weapon I currently have selected. So first thing to note about the SMS page is at the top left, we have profiles. If I press this, we can see that I have automatically generated six different profiles for the GBU-12. If I was wanting to attack multiple targets and have slightly different settings for each, this would allow me to quickly flip through those profiles. We're just going to use profile one today because we're only doing a single type of drop. But it's good to be aware that you can pre-program a bunch of these profiles and then flip through them. We also have confirmation of our laser code, 1688. Now, this is the laser code that is programmed on the bomb, not on the targeting pod. We need to make sure that these two match. Now, let's imagine that I'm on a um, multiplayer server, and I know that other members of my squadron are also using laser-guided bombs, and they are, one of them is already using 1688. How do I change the code on the bombs? Well, again, DECA have simulated a rather realistic real-world procedure. I can't change the code on the bombs. The code on the bombs is actually mechanically set uh, by the ground crew. So, again, I need to bring up my communications menu, go ground crew, and check, uh, click on update laser code. Now, the easiest way to do this, uh, I usually say change all digits. Uh, actually, choose all pylons, I would do that first. So we've told them we want to change all of the bombs change all digits and it'll actually take us through them one by one. You can only change the hundreds, tens and units. Uh, the thousands is always one. There's no other setting than one. So I'm going to say uh, one, six, eight, one, and then I choose setting complete. They say Roger. Yep, they say standby. They're doing it now. It takes them a little bit of time, and once they've done it, it will be reflected in the cockpit here, what the new code for the bombs is. So yeah, 1681 it should eventually say. Laser code ready. Laser code ready. And that's confirmed in the cockpit. I can now see 1681. You can only do this on the ground, and you can only do this when you're within range of your ground crew. So basically at an airfield, on a ramp, that kind of thing. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of other settings. Mode. Uh, automatic, that's actually the mode we're going to use. That's uh, basically uh, CCRP. Uh, but if we click on mode, you can see that there are a bunch of other modes that you can drop a bomb in. Um, we've got CCIP, we've got Dive Toss, we've got VIP and Direct. Today, we're just going to use automatic. I'm not going to cover these other modes in this video today. It would take too long. We then have the weapon, G12. If I click here, you can see that we can set this profile for the GBU-12 or for the gun. If I had other weapons on board, they would be available as selections as well. We're going to leave it on G12. Fusing is currently on safe. I'm not going to change this just now because we're it's not good practice to have your weapons armed while you're on the ground next to ground crew. Uh, but when we come to the target area, I will select fusing uh, and I will actually select nose and tail just for redundancy. We'll leave it on safe for now. Quantity, you would have the ability to drop multiples, your ones, twos, or fours. You can only drop these in pairs. Uh, I'm going to leave it single. 
If you had more than one, you could set an interval. And then break altitude, this is the point at which we get the break cross or the pull up cross. I'm actually going to set that to 1000 today because I think that will make this slightly safer. Uh, we're actually not going to be diving towards the target in any case. This is not a CCIP delivery, but still, I always like to set it. Uh, and that's it done. I'm now going to switch the aircraft back to navigation mode and uh, we can bring this back to the EFIS. EFIS. That is all the setup that we need to do before we reach the target area. Uh, I'll join you again in the cockpit on, way, on the way to the target. Okay, you rejoin us en route to the target area. Uh, we're going to attack a bomb circle, which is currently co-located with waypoint 1. It's 18.4 nautical miles away. So let's go ahead and set the aircraft into air-to-ground mode. We do that by pulling the T1 master mode switch aft. That puts us into air to ground. We're now going to focus down on the left MFD where we've got the stores management page. We can see that the, uh, the weapons are still in the configuration that we left them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, well, confirm the laser code is correct, 1681 as we set with the ground crew. Mode is automatic, quantity one, G12 selected. Let's now set the fusing. We want nose and tail. Uh, and the uh, the altitude for break is 1000, although that's not really going to apply. Uh, master arm setting is currently in safe. Let's flick the master arm to arm. You can see the bombs now say standby. And now they say armed. They're now powered and ready to use. Uh, with that done, let's go to the center multifunction display. And note that we have a repeated synoptic here for the, the stores. We can, we can see exactly what's on the aircraft. Let's go main menu. Pod, WMD7. Let's go ahead and turn the pod on. Let's uncage it and switch it from snowplow into slaved mode. That now means it's pointing directly at waypoint one. Before we proceed, let's set the laser code because the, the pod is currently set to emit 1688. We want to set 1681. That's now the correct matching code for our uh, laser guided bombs. We also want to check the laser firing mode. It's currently set to automatic. When you're dropping your own weapons, that's pretty much always the way I would leave it. It's the simplest method of employment. You can switch it to manual, and then you have a separate laser trigger that you can pull to manually fire the laser. I would only do that if you were buddy lasing for somebody else. If you're dropping and lasing your own weapons, leave it on automatic. Let's uh, switch to uh, narrow field of view. We can do that by pu pushing the, um, the sensor control switch to the right, sorry, forwards, in fact. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and use the zoom control. We're gonna zoom all the way down because we're quite far out just now. And then recenter that. It's gonna take a couple of moments to refocus there. That's about right. I'm gonna depress my T5, my TDC, and we're now in area track, and the laser has given us a range to the target of 18.5 nautical miles. With that, let's bring the aircraft out of active pause, and we will approach the target area. And let's go over the HUD symbology, because of course that's the primary method uh, with which we're going to be engaging the target. So if we turn off the autopilot, uh, I'm going to fly to put the flight path marker on the bomb fall line. Uh, you'll see that above the flight path marker, the bomb fall line is dashed, uh, and that is confirming to us that we're not quite in range yet. It will count down by becoming more and more solid as time goes on. Three seconds before drop, we will hear a tone. At that point, we will push and hold the pickle, and then we'll hear another tone when the bomb comes off. So we're just making our way towards the target now. Left-hand side of the HUD, we can see confirmed our weapon uh, selection, G12 and ready, air to ground mode, automatic release. We don't have to be massively accurate with this, of course, with the bomb fall line, because they are guided weapons after all. But the closer we are to the line, the better and the more accurate the drop is going to be. Spee indicator is flashing now, just indicating it's outside of the bottom of the HUD. Eight miles. Two 
tone, pushing and holding. That was the other tone. Bomb is away. Okay, so we're going to pop the autopilot back on. And now we're going to watch in the WMD pod. After a few seconds, laser designator is firing with a countdown to let us know when the, when the laser will turn off. And I've managed to completely <laughs> move it off the target. Let's go for that one instead. That worked. Impact. Good hit. Laser is still firing. It will automatically stop firing uh, once that timer runs out. You don't actually need to do anything special. So that was a successful drop. One thing to note, the, the up and down axis becomes very strange when you're overhead the target. So don't do what I just did there and try to refine it when you're close. Make sure all your refinement is done earlier. I don't know if that's a bug or the way the pod actually works. Okay. Timer is at zero, laser designator automatically turns off. And that is the complete procedure for dropping a GBU-12 in the GF-17. The exact same procedure would apply for the other laser-guided bombs, uh, in other words, the GBU-10 and 16, uh, but you can carry fewer of those. And I could then go ahead and drop a few more. So things of note, of course, uh, are that you need to interact with the ground crew to update your, uh, your data cartridge if you change your weapon loadout, and you do need to interact with the ground crew to change your laser code on your bombs. Um, if you're in multiplayer and you need to deconflict with other people. So, I hope that you all enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and the channel, and I'll see you all next time.